various questions. There is, um, you know, just a different thought process that we have to kind of go through. So uh, with the PBQs, they're different than uh, the regular questions. Uh, once again, so you're going to actually, actually perform an action. You're going to have to actually perform a function as opposed to uh, just uh, questions and answers. So um, this document right here is on uh, the student resources drive. Um, it's also on the Discord, uh, if you're in the Zero to IT Euro program. And this is just a framework that you can use uh, throughout, right? So uh, for example, on A+, plus, uh, it's a couple different uh, areas that uh, we want to focus on uh, when it comes to uh, the BB uh, PBQs or performance-based questions that may come up. So uh, you may run into hardware installation and configurations, such as setting up CPUs, RAM, or storage devices, uh, software installation and configuration, installing and configuring the operating systems or applications, a networking task, whether it's configuring networks, troubleshooting connectivity, or setting up a small network. And then uh, inside of those performance-based questions are always going to be uh, some troubleshooting scenarios, basically meaning something broke and you're going to have to fix. And then last but not least, uh, security configurations, whether it's setting up firewalls, security protocols, so on and so forth. So the first thing when it comes to performance-based questions, just understand what uh, performance-based questions are, right? And usually, if you're taking anything from A plus or above, uh, the performance-based questions are going to be the first question that you're going to see. Uh, you may get anywhere from three to six of these performance-based questions, and they weigh very heavily on your um, score, right? Long story short, uh, if you fail the PPQs, you most likely will fail uh, the exam. All right, so we understand what PPQs are. So the next thing is just make sure that um, you go over uh, the exam um, objectives, uh, whether it's core one or core two, uh, just to make sure that we understand what's on the exam. Now, don't look at the objectives as a Bible. Don't look at it as this is what's definitely going to be on the exam because there's hundreds. There's only hundreds of um, objectives on the exam, but it's only a maximum of 90 questions. So some of the things that are on the objectives may not even get mentioned. And if they do, they may mention 30 different objectives in one actual question, right? So long as they mention it, right? It may not even go uh, that far into um, into depth with it. But just make sure that you kind of look at the objectives and just focus on uh, whatever portion of, of the exam that has the highest um, highest amount of percentage. So if it's going to be 40% of the exam, it's probably a good idea to make sure that you're proficient at this stuff, right? So uh, next up, uh, we can actually get some, some quote-unquote uh, hands-on practice, right? Whether it's through uh, virtual machines, whether it's through doing things on your actual computer without saving the settings, but just kind of just going through and getting some practice on uh, some of those performance-based questions, right? So um, if you're in a program, uh, we already have those simulations, those uh, practical applications in the program that you can uh, practice on, but there's never too much, there's never too many reps that you can do, uh, but just make sure that um, when you come across a troubleshooting scenario, pretty much you can create a virtual environment in your damn mind and just kind of go through a troubleshooting uh, scenario on how you would actually fix it. Not just answering the question, but okay, if this ran, if I ran into this problem at my job or at my house, this is how I would fix it. Um, next up, you know, follow uh, pretty much the guidance inside the program, but if you got tutorials or guides, um, just make sure that you're setting up uh, different types of things, right? Kind of understand how to partition a disk, why we're partitioning disk, different types of RAID arrays, so on and uh, so forth, just to just to make sure, right? Um, also, uh, the command line, right? Make sure that uh, you got the basics down, okay? What is IP config? What is ping? What is net stack? We already know about all of those things. We just make sure that if we have to use a command line, we know how to um, perform, you know, certain functions to make sure that we get the correct uh, output, right? Uh, next up, um, like I said before, just think about different scenarios that come up and how you will go through um, that process. So like I always say, the um, troubleshooting process that we go over 
nearly every day, all the time is the same process as you're going to use across the board, uh, no matter um, what you're doing, right? So the troubleshooting process, the troubleshooting steps, um, auto troubleshooting steps, uh, no matter what, but we got to make sure that we are uh, going through those things um, in order, and it'll make things a lot easier if you go through um, the troubleshooting steps in order and kind of break things down, right? So um, we're actually in the exam. Uh, the first thing we're going to see is going to be these uh, performance-based questions, right? So most times, uh, whatever the scenario is, whatever it is, might are presented to you, um, but it won't tell you if uh, you completed the actual scenario correctly, right? If you say next and you didn't do anything right, that's not going to tell you. You're not going to know until uh, you get to the end and it show you that you failed. So just make sure when you get inside of the performance-based questions that you kind of take a step back, look. If you do not know um, what it's asking you to do, if you do not understand what it's asking you to do, just go to the next one, right? And then let's say the same thing happens with that one. Just keep on going to the next one until you find something that you understand, right? Because you can always go back. If you go um, to the next question, that doesn't mean that uh, you get a zero. That doesn't mean that you can't go back, right? Now, if you submit the exam, before finishing that, then of course you get a zero, but you can go back. Um, I always recommend that if you don't know what the hell it's talking about within the first couple minutes, just go ahead and skip to the next thing because a lot of times uh, what's covered inside the actual exam, the questions that they ask, so on and so forth, they usually spark something in your memory to kind of remember, okay, this is what um, I'm supposed to do. So the first thing you need to do is just read everything carefully. Take your time to read each um, PPQ and understand what it's asking you, right? So understand what it wants you to do and what it doesn't want you to do and only do those things. Then a lot of times, um, it'll kind of be an indication uh, to you if, let's say that they want you to set up a partition, right? A lot of times, it may show you um, a desktop, right? It'll show you a desktop. And um, if you're clicking stuff and it's not doing anything, it's not popping up, most likely you're in a completely wrong area, right? Now, if it does pop up, um, you know, most likely you're on the right path and then you can keep on going down that path. But once again, it will not tell you if you've done, if you did things right or if you did things wrong. Um, of course, follow the instructions, um, verify your work. Now, I will say this with the PPQs, whatever you do, I would just keep it the same, right? Let's say that you change some configuration. You click this, you click that, you move this, you move that. I wouldn't advise at the end going back and changing things. Most likely, uh, go with your first mind with the PBQs and then kind of go from there. Um, also, uh, time management is super important because usually on the uh, performance-based questions, the clock isn't present. It'll just show you the uh, actual scenario. It'll actually show you whatever it wants you to fix, uh, but it won't actually show the clock, right? So I don't want you to spend 45 minutes on a performance-based questions. And then at the end uh, of that, you got 60, 70, 80 questions to actually go through and only have, you know, 30, 45 minutes uh, to go through those questions. So just make sure that um, each PBQ, five to 10 minutes max, really, and then just go ahead um, and go to uh, the next thing. It shouldn't take you that long to figure out what it's asking and how to fix it, okay? Um, as always, um, you know, try to stay calm and confident. Uh, if you're struggling with confidence, you're fucked pretty much. Uh, if you are just uh, somebody who likes to second guess their self, somebody that just um, has zero confidence, you're going to have a, a rough time um, in the exam room and um, in life, right? Uh, because most times your first thought or your first mind is uh, correct. Um, you know, if you're in our program, uh, it's jumping out at you because I probably said it to you a hundred damn times already. All right, so um, here's a few, like super simple, you know, they're going to be um, a lot more um, in depth than this, but this is kind of just, you know, just a super simple uh, overview um, of, you know, some of the simple uh, PPQs, just so you kind of understand that it's not just going to be ask a question and then you answer it as you're going to have to perform some stuff. So for example, uh, let's say that we need to um, install a CPU and apply a thermal paste, right? We know the thermal paste is, or the heat sink could absorb some of that heat so the CPU doesn't blow up, right? So um, the approach would be follow manufacturer guidelines for CPU installation, use a pea-sized amount of thermal paste and spread evenly. So if you go through um, a PPQ and it either asks you to 
um, create a PC or to uh, put certain uh, components inside of a PC, this would be a part of that process, right? Now, uh, software installation and configuration. Uh, let's say that it wants you to um, install and configure a dual boot system with Windows on one side and then Linux on the other side. So in this, you got the partition or drive, install Windows and then Linux and then configure a bootloader. So um, just remember, uh, let's say that you do, uh, you partition the disk and you install Linux, right? For this PPQ, you would get zero. Just remember that you don't get uh, partial credit. You don't get partial points for anything. You have to, um, whatever it asks you to do, you have to do that. At the end of the PPQ to get it right, you would have had to have to install both Windows and Linux and give a user the ability to boot from either one, right? All right, so uh, another one that we may run across is a networking. Uh, so for this, it's um, set up a small home network with uh, wired and wireless connections. And um, for this, you already know we got to go inside the router, configure routing settings, assign IP addresses, and ensure that everything is connected uh, in between all of those devices, right? So if we do not complete this task, just remember we do not get any credit, all right? Um, and then like I said, let's just say that uh, you get uh, across a, a PPQ that you don't quite understand, you think you know, but you don't know, just skip it. No big deal. Um, go through um, the uh, multiple choice questions, which you uh, may be a little bit more comfortable with. Then by the time you get uh, and come back to the PPQs, you'll have your confidence up. Um, you'll kind of have um, a game plan um, on what you need to do. All right. Uh, of course, this is always going to be um, a big one, uh, troubleshooting scenarios. Um, almost everything, including the PPQs, um, on all these exams you guys are going to be taking is going to be uh, troubleshooting. Something is broken. Um, you got to figure out uh, what's going on. Now, for this scenario, it says diagnose why computer is not booting correctly. So we already know we got to go into the BIOS to see is it booting from the right device. Uh, make sure the boot order is correct, and then test uh, just to make sure that everything is good, so on and so forth. Then, last but not least. Um, security configurations, uh, configure a firewall to block unauthorized incoming traffic. So, you know, we got to go into firewall settings, create rules to either block uh, certain devices or certain IPs, or we can just block an entire port if um, we know that intrusions are going to happen um, on that port. Um, so long story short, um, if you follow this framework um, for A plus uh, and um, the future a certification you guys are going to be taking. Uh, this should be a pretty good framework for uh, the uh, PPQs. But the main one of the main things is though, um, actually taking the exam, um, not second guessing yourself, um, and having uh, confidence. 